Convocation is now in session. As Chancellor, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our 311th Convocation. Before we proceed with the ceremony, I'd like to call upon Professor Emerita Margaret Kello to present Western University's land acknowledgement. Good morning, and congratulations to all our graduating students and a warm Western welcome to all the families and friends celebrating with us today. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that our beautiful Western campus is situated on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabeg, Haudenosaunee, Lenape, and Attawandaran peoples, who have a long-standing relationship to the land and region of southwestern Ontario and the City of London. The local First Nations communities of this area include Chippewa of the Thames First Nation, Oneida Nation of the Thames, and Muncie Delaware Nation. In the region, there are 11 First Nations communities and a growing indigenous urban population. Western values the significant historical and contemporary contributions of local and regional First Nations peoples and of all the original peoples of Turtle Island. Miigwech. To all our graduates, first let me say congratulations. You've worked hard to achieve this. Graduation represents a major milestone in your lives. At Convocation, we assemble as a university community to celebrate and recognize your achievements at Western and to wish you every success for the future. Your learning days are far from over. Learning is a lifelong process. Western has not provided you with answers to all questions. At most, we hope that what stays with you is a way of thinking objectively, approaching problems with an open mind and a healthy respect for new ideas, all tempered with compassion and empathy for the human condition. You are forever a cherished member of this great university founded 140 years ago. We welcome you into the Western family. Again, congratulations to each and every one of you. Today, we also confer an honorary degree upon David Shore in acknowledgement of his accomplishments as a Gemini and Emmy Award-winning writer and producer in television. With deep local roots, being raised in London and having attended Western University, we honor him as a Canadian writer who exemplifies quality, intriguing material valued by society for its unique and socially trending content. To present our distinguished candidate, I now call upon Dr. Norma Coates, Faculty of Information and Media Studies. David Shore. In a presentation at the Paley Center for Media in 2008, David Shore said he would still be a lawyer if it weren't for having to deal with the clients. As we honor David today, we are grateful for those clients who convinced him to get out of law and move into television. David was born and raised here in London, a long way from California where he would eventually settle. He graduated from A.B. Lucas Secondary School and attended Western before gaining early admittance to law school at the University of Toronto. Following graduation, he worked for a law firm in Toronto, and after making partner, to the, to the surprise of his colleagues, he decided to try his hand at writing for television in Los Angeles. Originally, David hoped to write comedy. After all, a few years earlier, he was named the third funniest person in London, Ontario. He got an agent based on the spec script, worked freelance, and eventually returned to Canada. In Toronto, he worked as a writer and producer for dramas like Traders and Due South, which won him a Gemini Award in 1996 for best writing in a dramatic series. Eventually, David made his way back to LA, where he wrote for NYPD Blue and The Practice before garnering two Emmy nominations in 1998 and 1999 as a producer on Law and Order. In 2004, David created one of the top 10 shows in television history, according to the American Film Institute, House MD. The show featured a main character with a visible disability and an often acerbic personality. 
In several interviews, David has alluded to the connections between Sherlock Holmes and Gregory House. Both solve mysteries, both are addicts, and while Holmes has a sidekick in Dr. Watson, House has, Doc has Dr. Wilson. House was a new kind of character on television. A flawed character who struggles with his disability and addiction made the fact that he was almost always right more bearable for those around him and for audiences watching. The show earned David two Humanitas Prizes, multiple Emmy, Emmy nominations, and the Writers Guild of America Award. Since House ended in 20, 2012, David has taken on new challenges as executive director and writer for Battle Creek, Sneaky Pete, Houdini and Doyle, and the new medical drama, The Good Doctor. Like Dr. Gregory House, Dr. Sean Murphy of The Good Doctor also has a disability, autism. In 2017, as in 2004 when House premiered, audiences embrace The Good Doctor. The show is critically acclaimed, has been called the undisputed freshman hit of the 2017-2018 season, and it will return for a second season this fall. In 2015, David and his friend, fellow writer and Western graduate Deepak Sethi, participated in a video promoting that year's homecoming. The clip features David explaining to Deepak that he didn't build a house, he created the TV show house. It's funny and endearing. David is clearly a man who is comfortable being known as the third funniest person in London, Ontario. And he is also a former lawyer who has shown us the human conditions in many dimensions through his writing. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and in the name of Senate, I ask you to confer the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa upon a man who has created multiple fascinating and memorable characters for our entertainment and enlightenment, David Shore. By virtue of the authority vested in me as chancellor, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa. Congratulations, Dr. Shore. On behalf of all assembled here today, I should now like to invite our newest alumnus, Dr. David Shore, to address convocation. Thank you, Dr. Coates, Chancellor Cohen, President Shachma, faculty members, and anyone else who was part of this decision. My mother is very happy. To the graduates, no matter what you do with your life, you will always be proud, as I am today for the first time, to call yourself a Western University graduate. Of course, unlike yours, my degree is honorary, which is kind of ironic. It would be a much bigger honor if it wasn't honorary. <laughs> Just code for you can't use this. This isn't real. Not sure how that's actually an honor, uh, but I am appreciative. <laughs> Unlike yours, mine is just a piece of paper. Actually, it's a piece of leather, I think, so, so that's nice. But that in no way diminishes the honor in my mother's eyes. <laughs> I went to Western years ago, but I did not get a diploma from Western. I did not graduate. After two years, I left because I knew what I wanted from my life, and I wanted to get there as soon as possible. So I packed my bags and I went to law school. That's what I wanted. My point is, I was an idiot. <laughs> My larger point, because it seems today I should have a larger point, is that in all likelihood, you are idiots too.
don't know if your parents started the applause there. I'm sorry. Uh, everybody in their 20s is an idiot, which is not surprising because, and I say this with the wisdom that time brings, everybody in their 50s is an idiot too. <laughs> parents, whatever your age, give your kids a knowing nod. And extrapolating, I'm hoping to be an idiot in my 80s and 90s because it's okay to be an idiot as long as you realize it. I'm not saying you know nothing. You obviously know a lot. The piece of paper you're going to be receiving shortly is testament to that. I'm just saying there's a whole lot of stuff you don't know. And that's actually good and exciting. It's actually fundamentally important. Too many people in this world don't know that they're idiots. Don't know that issues are way more complicated than they think they are. I'm sure you all have a lot of strong positions you proudly hold and declare. Good for you, fight for what you believe in. But if you feel exactly like you do today when you're 30, when you're 40, when you're 50, that doesn't mean you refuse to sell out. That means you refuse to grow, refuse to, look at the, refuse to listen, refuse to look at the world and at the people with whom you disagree with an open mind. Either that or you're already perfect. And if you think that, well, you're an idiot. <laughs> but I also strongly suspect that the administration of this fine university did not invite me here today to call you idiots. I believe the traditional expectation is to inspire, to use my life and my words to inspire the leaders of tomorrow, because that is what you are, the leaders of tomorrow. It is worth noting, though, that you are also the followers of tomorrow. Bear that in mind. Uh, there's a certain amount of pressure that comes from standing on a stage and telling a collection of young people how to live their lives. That pressure is slightly abated as I think back to the words that were spoken to me at my own university convocation, and I realize that I remember none of them. <laughs> or who said them. So I stand here secure in the knowledge that for most of you, my 10 minutes here are a waste of time. <laughs> but I'm going to continue on. <laughs> they gave me the time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, many people have had this opportunity, and many people have chosen not to waste this time. So I did take this seriously. I did some research. And I learned that you could and arguably would be better served to go online and watch Tim Minchin's 2013 commencement speech to the University of Western Australia, Elizabeth Warren's 2016 speech to Suffolk University, Barack Obama's 2016 address to Howard University, Justin Trudeau's 2018 address to NYU, but you probably won't because there are a lot of shorter, funnier videos online. <laughs> but I did. And one speech in particular stuck with me. Steve Jobs, as representative really, Steve Jobs spoke to Stanford class of 2005. He had three pieces of advice. One, the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work, and the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Don't settle. Two, he said you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, life, karma, whatever. This approach has never let me down and it has made all the difference in my life, he said. <clears throat> and three, he concluded, unfortunately quite ironically, he was healthy at this moment, remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. All external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death leaving only what's important. That kind of summarizes the life lessons that all these commencement addresses try to, try to impart. Do what you love, follow your dreams, and life is short. And I disagree with every part of that. <laughs> I'm serious. So don't get me wrong, yes, I'm obviously a big believer that you should be afraid, shouldn't be afraid to follow your dreams. I'm also a big believer that you shouldn't be afraid to give up on your dreams. We've got enough good-looking dog walkers in Hollywood. <laughs> because things do not always turn out for the best. Things always turn out for the best is something said by people for whom things have turned out for the best. <laughs> 
which is why I'm very uncomfortable with my life story being held up as an example to aspire to. Because, to overwork a theme, I was an idiot. The fact that it all worked out very nicely doesn't make me any less of an idiot. I quit law, moved to LA, and started writing, in that order. I didn't write part-time, honing my craft, continuing to earn a living. I quit, moved, and then started typing. The fact that some people say it was courageous does not mean it wasn't also idiotic. In fact, it was not even courageous. Because there was one thing I was not an idiot about. I did know something. It wasn't courageous because I knew it wasn't that big a deal. Failure wasn't that big a deal. If I failed, all that would happen was that I'd have to go back to law with my tail between my legs and with a tan. <laughs> and five years after that, it would just be an amusing anecdote. Because life is not short. For most of us, there will be plenty of time to screw up over and over and over again and maybe get one or two things right eventually. Success cannot be what drives you. Failure cannot be what you run from. I've always written what I found entertaining and crossed my fingers that other people would like it. I've always completely accepted that they might not, and if they didn't, I'd have come back to law with no regrets. Because most days, I do not love what I do. <laughs> Writers hate writing, love having written. There is no magic job. Was I destined to write? Was writing the, my only way to happiness? If I had failed, if my career had not unfolded as it had, would I be miserable today? I hope not. Yes, for millions of people, Monday nights at 10 would be a miserable time, but I'd be fine. <laughs> I hope I would have been able to take whatever career I wound up in and made the most of it. Because your job does not define you. It's what you do with your job. What you do with everything else in your life, that's what defines you. Which is too bad, because I've got the coolest job in the world. <laughs> so what does it all mean? Try to follow your dreams. Try to do what you love. We all have the power to change the world. Just don't feel too bad if you don't. Try again. Be good, be kind, be honorable. That BS, that I believe in. That is what will give your life meaning. That is what you will look back on with pride. Lead wisely, follow wisely, take your time, make the best choices you can, and try to have fun. It's not always easy, even when your dreams come true. Of course, I'm an idiot. I could be wrong. <laughs> so thank you, and good luck. Thank you, David, uh, for inspiring our graduates in your own very special way. <laughs> As an award-winning television writer and producer, you have brought thought-provoking characters to the small screen. You are also someone who is an inspiration to those pondering their future, with all the caveats that you have added. Having completed a degree, worked, and then pursued a completely different, very successful path. And I'm truly delighted and honored that, uh, that in complete business of uh, getting you a Western degree is now complete. Distinguished guests, please join me in congratulating our newest honorary doctor of laws, Dr. David Shaw. I take pleasure in asking the Vice Chancellor to present to convocation our newly appointed emeritus and emerita librarians. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. The designation of librarian emeritus and librarian emerita is an honorary title which recognizes long and distinguished academic service. Will librarian Francis Ann Gray please step forward? Frances has worked in libraries for most of her life, 
beginning in a local public library. She was hired as a library assistant at what is now the Taylor Library. In 1992, Frances began her professional library and career as the collections librarian for physics, astronomy, math, and art sciences. In 2001, Frances moved to the Weldon Library, where she had responsibilities as instructional coordinator, head of research and instructional services, and research and instruction librarian. She has supported students and researchers in a wide variety of subject areas, including engineering, women's studies, and information and media studies. Mr. Chancellor, may I present Librarian Emerita Francis and Gray. Will Librarian Vince Gray please step forward? Vince's undergraduate degree is from Huron College. In returning for computer science, he switched streams, completing his MLIS in 1985. He joined the Social Science Computing Laboratory as Data Resources Librarian in 1986. Over 23 years, he participated in various database projects, including the automation of the publications of faculty and staff. Data delivery was central to his career. He was a member of the team which designed both the Internet Data Library and the Equinox Data Delivery Systems. He served on UOFA LA negotiating committees. Joining Western Libraries in 2009, he continued to assist students, faculty, and staff with their data and geospatial needs. Mr. Chancellor, may I present Librarian Emeritus Vince Gray. Will Librarian Catherine Wilkins please step forward? Dr. Wilkins, in his, inspired by the collegial culture of Western Libraries and Western University, she provided leadership for the Weldon Library, arriving at Western in 2006. She worked collaboratively with colleagues and students on a variety of strategic library initiatives, establishing Weldon Library as a 24-7 academic study hall for examination periods. She co-chaired Western Library's Space Master Plan, was elected to Senate, and actively served on numerous university committees. Catherine believes it is important to balance the value of academic library as a place for inspiration, scholarship, and social interaction with the globally accessible digital library. Mr. Chancellor, may I present librarian Emerita Catherine Wilkins. The candidates for degrees, diplomas, and certificates, please rise. Mr. Chancellor, I'm very much honored to present to you the candidates who have successfully completed their academic programs at Western. I ask you to admit them to the degrees, diplomas, and certificates for which they have been recommended by the Senate of our university. Under the authority vested in me by the Senate, you will be admitted to the degrees, diplomas, and certificates as shall be announced by the public orators. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Will the candidates please be seated?
Mr. Chancellor, graduating students, colleagues, distinguished guests. Convocation is the single most important time of celebration in the life of the university. Today, we honor those graduating students who through determination, hard work, and intelligence have met the demanding standards of a Western degree. Today is a proud day for all of us associated with Western, including our Board of Governors and Senate, our faculty, our staff, and our friends in the community. It is wonderful to see so many members of our community of learning who have taken the time to join us and celebrate this important day in the lives of our graduates and the life of the university. Today, those of you crossing the platform join a special group known as Western Alumni that numbers over 293,000 alumni living in 150 different countries around the world. We are pleased to have Mr. Hani Hassan, former chair of our Board of Governors and now representing our Alumni Association with us. I would ask him to please stand and be recognized. Western's Board of Governors is charged with responsibility for the overall governance of this institution. Today we have with us Mr. Matthew Wilson representing our Board of Governors, and I'll ask him to please stand and be recognized. It is my pleasure to extend a very special welcome to Mr. Peter Devlin, President of Fanshawe College and a proud graduate of this university, who is joining us today to celebrate the awarding of degrees to graduates of the Joint Western Fanshawe Media Theory and Production Program. Peter, would you please stand and be recognized? Now I would like to acknowledge and thank the parents, spouses, partners, children, relatives, and friends of our graduate who are here today. This celebration would not have been possible without your loving support. Now I ask our graduating class to rise once again, turn around, face your family and friends, and give them a warm round of applause for supporting your journey. Let me congratulate once again the remarkable students who graduate today with Western degrees. Today, you become partners in outstanding academic achievements of the University of Western Ontario. My warmest wishes to each and every one of you. We will now proceed with granting of degrees, diplomas, and certificates. Before we do so, I have two special requests for those of you in the audience. First. As a courtesy to all graduates and their families, please hold your applause and any other special forms of expressions of joy <laughs> until the public auditor signal when applause is appropriate throughout the ceremony. Uh, this will ensure that each graduate's name will be heard. So let me just elaborate uh, exactly what will happen. Uh, first, we will grant degrees to our PhD candidates one at a time. Please hold your applause until we have completed the group of PhD candidates. And at that point in time, public auditors will lead us in our applause. Of course, please join us then. The next, we'll grant degrees three at a time. So this is when your cooperation is very uh, desirable because three names will be read back to back. And we want those names to be heard without any interruption. So please don't applaud after three graduates have crossed the stage. We'll give ample time. We try to applaud our graduates, cheer them up after each class has passed. When the class is large, we find appropriate intervals to cheer them up. So please join us then. After a few rounds, you know what I'm actually talking about. Second, we know that photographs are important for our graduates, their family, and friends. 
As you heard, before the ceremony began, we are pleased to provide each graduate with a photograph of this special occasion. Therefore, we ask that you remain in your seats throughout the ceremony, and of course, feel free to take photographs from there. I now call on the public auditors to introduce the candidates for degrees. Turn off those phones. Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates from the School of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies for the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Celinda Adele Berg. Sonia Delat. Catherine Hode Reddick. Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates for the degree Master of Arts, Alan Del Pino, Olivia Nazarevich. Okay, Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates for the degree Master of Health Information Science, Janet Lowheed and Megan Forney. That's it. Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates for the degree Master of Library and Information Science, Zakaria Abdi, Lindsay Lorena Joy Bowen, Durrell Bowman.
Delaney J. L. Brown, Jordan Florence Bullbrook, Daniel Cascara. Ladies and gentlemen, there are actually several students more in this group, so we'll cue you after each degree group. Honest, I promise, we'll give you the signal. <laughs> Selwyn Chung, Nicole Aaron Corbo, Sydney Victoria Cromwellholm. Nicole Susan Delellis, Marie Claire Fries, Christy Lee DePiero. Amanda Amy Gosher, Sarah Carleen Glassford, Jordy Gosnell. Chrisandra Ivings, Michael Kevin Kell, Rebecca Catherine Helena King. Tim Young La, Anjali Lehman, Megan Lobson. Hillary Noel Miller, Sarah Lois Mills, Hamdi Yusuf Mualim. Cal Murgu, gold medalist, Ashley Anne Marie O'Brien. Holly Elizabeth Otwell. Madison Patterson, Rebecca Diane Pearson, Savia Revathi. Hano Marathi. Cassandra Peterson, Preeti Cheruki Cherukeri Rao, Shifa Redmond. Sabrina Elspeth Redwing Saunders, Emily Sarah Robinson, Holly Sarvari. J. 
Justine Splain, Alexander Taylor, Kelly Ann Tice. Alexandra Turcott, Anayo Ugboma, Aaron Margaret Unger. Vanessa Doviak, Marilee Wheaton, Alexander Wright. Ellen Ashley Wright, Stacy Zip. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates from the Faculty of Information and Media Studies for the degree Bachelor of Arts Honors Program. Tala Al-Ramahi, Kia Anderson, Katie Andrade. Jacqueline Suzanne Antonioni, Sydney Lila Arnold, Kristen Jane Austen. Daria Justina Bages, Paige Kathleen Beveridge, Julie Bialis. Olivia Jane Buckner, Samantha Bugos, Vanessa Bullock. Kenzie Burns, Alexandra Burza, Kelsey Jean Bush. Charlotte Caswell, Christina Chan, and Mal Chandla. Marisa Josephine Cho, Diana Proctor Belasese Colley, Emma Helena Colley. Rebecca Charnetsky, Julia DiSabatino, Madison Rose DeLumi.
Michelle Sarah Delumi, Aruna Dutt, Ayana, Elena Izinga. Lauren Michelle Ferguson, Sean Gregory Ferguson, Catherine Fung. Chelsea Simone Germain, Lauren Giandomenico, gold medalist, Amelia Kathleen Getz. Jessica Sarah Golyatov, Jessica Rachel Granovsky, Cassidy Jean Harlock, gold medalist. Alicia Christina Harris, Jenna Rose Hebb, Helen Bridget Grant Hickela. Lauren Hoffman, Emily Dominique Houfoy, Brianne Jean Hyde. Carolina Yalaska, Olivia Madison Keast, Elise Galertus. Adam Kashaji, Ksenia Kolodka, Marcus Gordon Kretz. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a large graduating class. Let's take some time now and applaud this group. <laughs> Serena J. U. Lam, Sierra Lane, Brianna Nicole Leguay. Gabriella Learn, Tiffany Rose Liu, Nicole Lee. Sophia Liang, Amelia Margaret Loomer, Sarah Lovering. Kathy Lee, Gabrielle Serena Malik. Camilla Marcus. Shannon Heidi Marks. Michael Anthony Marty Marka. 
Nathan Mario Rubin Mathoff Olszewski. Sorry. Sienna Georgetta Maxwell, Madeleine Angela McDougall, Emma McGillis. Ellen McGran, Caitlin Kelly McKenna, Janet McParland. Paige Lee McPherson, Kaylee Joanne Mead Heinzel, and Sawhill Merchandi, Merchand, Merchandani, I'm sorry. <laughs> Emily Anne Marie Mamet, Samantha Amy Morgan. Shannon Catherine Morgan. Okay. Caitlin Louise Murphy. Catherine Rose Nelson. Nicole Fatima Nashi. Laura Gina Orlando, Teal Palma Nolta, Catherine Emily Ocher. Ronald James Patrick, Alex Elizabeth Prong, Ella Pirtle. Matthew Tyler Rate, Karen Ramey. Syed Schwab Hassan Rizvi. Okay. Nuran Saren Sahin, Tanya Sani, Paulina Sanchez. Madison Skyini, Fiona Jean Isabel Schreider, Amber Silva. Good. Rachel Elizabeth Smythe. Darby Elizabeth Starling, Rose Anna Taggy Ganjak.
Taylor Aaron Tepperman, Ryan Thompson, Sarah Ann Traconia. <laughs> Abigail Ka Man Tung, Hannah Sydney Walsh, Victoria Wiley. Tracy G. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts four year program. Anna Alberga, Rachel Mary Louise Bennett, Abby Irene Blackburn. Madison Monique Booth. Tegan Wesley Boyle, Laurel Kristen Burry. Rong Chen, Connor Elise Cherry, Emma Jane Coates. Melanie Connell, Hannah Margaret DeWitt, Jessica Rose Durand. Maria Claire Federico, Emily Grace Flatley, Jessica Rachel Freed. Andrea Tara Fergiwelli. Ilan Annika Gardner. Julie Catherine Goddard. <laughs> Jessica Sarah Golden Tuller, Savannah Brielle Gray, Monica Ha. Justin Haynes, Savannah Summer Hamlin, Danielle Alexandra Byers Hart. <laughs> Melissa Hoffman, Christine Howarth. Rachel Elise Jones. Okay. 
Carol Sadiq's coleslaw. Stephanie Kara Savitas, Arnav Kosla, Anastasia Kolotova. Dana Lamb and Grunfeld. Isabella Cusco, Dana Lamb. Montgomery Alexander Grunthal Langford. <laughs> Jennifer Yun Jun. Hannah Jordan Lidsky. Justine Kate Lorch. Devin Lynn McKenzie. Kendry Macon Ricosi. Jordan Alyssa Manis. Celia Pauline McConnell, Bryn McCutcheon, Rochelle Marie Mecca. <clears throat> Jennifer Ann Miller. Martina Novarita, Rebecca Alexandra O'Hare, gold medalist. Claire Adelaide Palmer, Lena Poonam Patel, Jason Pun. Julia Salmena, Cheyenne Marie Santos, Stephanie Ann Serino. Rebecca Elaine Serena, Christian Newell Shirk. Cassandra Shu. Agata Spiwakowski. Kasania Stradborskia Ivanova. Giuseppina Tat Angelo. Emma Joanne Isabella Van Erb. Kathy Vo. Sarah Ann Warner. Alicia Way, Caitlin Brianna Wilson, Amanda Zoltak. <clears throat> Jennifer 
Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts. Laura Alyssa Cabral, Michaela Rose Cronin, Selena Fatima Nazarali, gold medalist. King Yi Sun, Mallory Ann Thompson, Michaela Zafino. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts, Western Fanshawe Collaborative Program. Justine Nicole Albrechtus, Riley Christina Alp, Joshua Jeremy Bournet. Courtney Marie Chasson, Connor Clark, Terrence Dewar, gold medalist. Christopher Michael Downs, Brittany Dooley, Rowie Dunkelman. Alyssa Gazer. Keja Gargarello. Sam Ya Nila. Nilani Hassan. Nicholas James David Ireland. Jonathan Kennedy. Carolyn LaRock. Connor Malbuff, Paige Nicole Martin, Jaron McDonald. Grant Alexander McGuire, Corey Michael O'Shaughnessy. Julia Marie Peden. Andrew Prince. Sonia Rufolo. Ryan Slobin. Amanda Maria Viveros, Brooklyn Page Watson, Matthew George Watson.
Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates for the Diploma in Marketing. Diana Lizeth Alvin Obando. Robin Leonard. Caitlin Jane Lococo. Laura Rose Marsilio. Amara Sachadina. Robert Gregory Robert Vanagasuriar. <laughs> done. In the name of the Senate, I grant to the Registrar the authority to confer degrees, diplomas, and certificates to those candidates whose names appear in the official program, but who are not present today. At this time, I invite Mr. Hani Hassan, representing our Alumni Association, to say a few words. My fellow graduates, it is my great honor on behalf of Western's Alumni Association to congratulate you and to welcome you. You worked hard to complete your studies and examinations, and today you received your well-earned degrees. Western, our faculties and affiliated colleges are very proud of its world-class standing, and we know you share that pride as graduates of our undergraduate and graduate programs. Now all of you join our growing global community of Western alumni. We are all united by the Western experience, our cherished memories of our times here, particularly of the knowledge and the friendships gained. You will find that your Western experience continues as alumni, and I encourage you to remain purple and proud by participating actively as alumni, cultivating the strength and global reputation of our, alumni, of our alma mater. It is my pleasure to invite you and your guests to attend a reception in your honor to be held in the University Community College Mustang Lounge immediately following convocation, where refreshments will be served and where you will receive your 2018 class pin. To you, your friends and families, enjoy and, and embrace the tributes that you so richly deserve today. And remember, wherever life takes you, Western will always be home. Before closing convocation, I wish to express my appreciation to all who have contributed to the success of the day in particular, and on your behalf as well, I want to thank the University of Western Ontario Convocation Brass for their magnificent performance and their director, Professor James Mackay. May I request that the audience remain at their seats while the academic procession leaves the hall. Convocation is now adjourned. <laughs>